Um, it's a nonprofit um, game developers collective in Brooklyn. Um, I'm part of Outpost 4, um, and I'm a co-founder and CEO of the company. Um, previously, before the one that uh, I'm working on here, uh, I was on the Letters to World development team, which is a Word game for um, iOS. Um, and the game I'm currently working on, which I actually just released today, is called Nocturne. Um, and it's a VR instrument. Um, it's in the meta uh, app universe, and it's built around a theremin and a synthesizer uh, use case. So you can go and you can make like custom um, tracks and things like that, export it at lossless audio, and it has different ways you can configure the instrument in a virtual environment. Um, it was a chance meeting with one of the uh, oh, yeah. core members. Uh, we were just at this event in New York and we just kind of, just by happenstance, we're sitting next to each other and kind of traded war stories about, uh, you know, working in nonprofits and, and working in the indie space with games. And, you know, when I kind of got like a soft pitch about the place, I was like, I got to be here. We were looking for an office space since, um, you know, I moved back to New York and it was just really like, just, it was a great fit. It's been great. Um, you know, I think that they really onboarded everyone that I met, onboarded me uh, really well. Um, it was all really clear as to how, you know, the, the desk setup was. I came in as a full-time member, um, so I, I use this place quite a lot, and it's only ever, like, increased my productivity. Everybody's respectful of everybody's space. Um, you know, it's kind of an introvert's paradise. <laughs> can really just work without being bothered, but everyone, you know, is very tactful about when they want to kind of interact and stuff, so. And just the practical resources of just like having a secure location to have the equipment, because we, you know, we're working with VR, so we have a couple headsets here. Um, you know, printers is like a lot of the business admin costs, especially for like a small studio starts to stack up really quickly. And for what we pay, for what we get back, it's, it's just a no brainer. Yes. Um, like I said, I think everybody's really tactful. Um, there's a genuine curiosity about people's projects. Um, every time you're working on some kind of weird problem or trying to troubleshoot some, something, it turns out someone sitting right next to you is working on the same thing. Or, you know, you've got like this brain trust here that, uh, that is really welded to some positive personalities. Um, I, I, I will have heavy office weeks, um, so the, our team's kind of split up. I'm here in New York, the main developer of the game is in New Jersey, and uh, our business admin person is in Philadelphia. So we started the company during the pandemic, and you know, we, we, we've really been used to you know, work from home. Um, but uh, it's good because you know, as a full-time member, I can kind of come in and be like, all right, I'm only going to be here one or two days, or like a week like this, I'll be here like three or four times a week. So it's good knowing that you have that safety cushion that like if you have to do a really big push, you can kind of come back here and get the work done. Absolutely. I mean, I think that the, again, it's just there, everyone from, you know, the, the, uh, the core leadership here has been very uh, deliberate about getting good people to come in and to have it be, you know, pleasant, but also just like, uh, objective oriented like for example um, we just had a unity mixer here and you know pretty much all the developers here are working in unity and the large part of the focus that they had was on their outside services you know aside from their main engine they have all these other things for how to get monetized how to handle you know cloud storage for the game it was all just really kind of like periphery kind of like stuff and having being able to have like you know a couple hours um you know of undivided attention with these people was really is, is going to be very fruitful for us in the future. So, you know, I think it's just when you see the way that the thought process goes into a lot of things that are run here, it's very deliberate and, and you know, the events follow suit. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think every developer is going to need have different needs. Um, you know, we, but I, you know, we have a core team of four people, but, you know, when we have to go into different workplaces, it can get up to 10 folks. So, again, just having a central location, the, having a central physical location that has our core admin 
needs taken care of and that's secure, um, you know, and that gives us the kind of flexibility of access, it's exactly where we need to be. I think any developer who will be looking to kind of, you know, work in or with Gumbo, really got to look at what your needs are and how that's going to, how, how it's going to affect it. But everything that, you know, is there on paper about this space is, is pretty well represented. Um, I think this is my fifth month, fifth or sixth. I don't know exactly off the top of my head. I think it's, I think it's five. Um, I, I've been at, I think I had a, uh, test week over at WeWork and it was awful. <laughs> Just be, be totally real. So I was really kind of turned off on that. And then this is kind of back in the day, but there was a space over in, uh, Williamsburg, um, that actually was like run by this like slumlord and he, uh. He like screwed everybody out of it. So I was just very, very, by the time we started the company, I was very extremely skeptical, let's say, about co-working spaces. And when I got here, I was just sort of like, this, this place is kind of the exception that proves the rule. Um, I think a lot of like co-working spaces can kind of be a little, that for what they provide, they're charging people way too much, I think. This place is just, just, just right, it's perfect. <laughs> Um, you know, so far, I think the, 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 the fun things I could have is probably just like nebulous, just like good, you know, just, just good vibes from people. I think, it, um, uh, nothing particularly comes to mind. Um, I did, I did have a, there's like a, I think there's like a Pokemon that was back here. Um, and I, there's like a little nap couch over here and I took a nap and I woke up and there was like a little Pokemon next to my head. I was like, yep, this is where I <laughs> work now. That's probably the, the fondest memory. Emotional support Pikachu. Yeah, no, it's it's really cute. You know, it's like a, it's a little slice of uh, Brooklyn contemporary with some some game stuff, and it's, you can't get can't get uh, uh, anything but spoiled on that. I don't. I'm pretty Spartan with it. I'm just too lazy to decorate it yet. I don't know. You talk to me in like five more months, I'll probably have some crap up there. I think I have a Gundam in my uh, in my desk over there, but I just haven't been able to get properly set up. Um, yes. Uh, obviously, if you go to atmos4.net, uh, you can check out our, our game right now. Like I said, we released today, um, which probably won't mean anything because this is a recording. Uh, but you can you can check it out um, when you go there, and then um, you go to Bandcamp. You can pick up our album. Also, um, there are a couple folks who just put out a couple books recently. Uh, Amy Saul Zerby put out a, a book. Um, I think it's called um, "Choose Your Own Ending," which is, was really nice. And then uh, a friend, also uh, John Wall Barger, came out with a book called. Um, smog mother so i have some like poet friends who just i don't know what it's something in the air this week but like a bunch of people release stuff so if you like poetry if you like sad stuff check those out